Woo woo, A ATL in the house. <laughs> ATL slash New Orleans, baby. Okay, I can dig it. I love the accent. Yes. Yes, baby. <laughs> So I'm here with Deja Vu 504. First of all, tell people a little bit about yourself and let, let's get into the moniker Deja Vu 504. How yes. Do you know that? Um, actually, the name was given to me from um, someone that's real deep. He's real uh, spiritual from New Orleans. I was really, really young. He saw me at a talent show and he was like, you're going to name yourself Deja Vu. Well, not 504, but he was like, you're going to name yourself Deja Vu. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? And then eventually I named myself Deja Vu. He was right. You know what I'm saying? And um I just added the 504 behind it because I feel like, you know, I be carrying New Orleans on my back. You know what I'm saying? I got to represent. Okay, <laughs> I love I represent it. where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> so you're originally from New Orleans. How did you end up in Atlanta? Uh -huh. um, I end up in Atlanta because after Katrina, uh, we went to Houston. I'm sorry. No, it's we okay. Went <laughs> <laughs> we went to Houston oh. after Katrina and, um, I mean, I like Houston, it's cool, it was nice. I love Houston, actually, I met a lot of good people out there, but I always wanted to be in Atlanta for some reason. So I was like, I wanna go to Atlanta. So we moved to Atlanta and we was like, we just gonna grind from there. Okay, it's yeah. <laughs> How did you get into music? Um, <laughs> I've been doing music forever. I've been doing music since I was like nine. Like, I always wanted to, you know, rap or sing or something like that. I started writing. It was just a, like an outlet for me. It was just my thing. And mm -hmm. um, by the time I got a little bit older, my mom, she saw me do a talent show and she loved how I, you know, rap and everything. And she just mm -hmm. put everything behind me from there. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, girl. I always get to have a supportive family, you know? Yes. yes. Especially with music because music is so when it comes to support and people believing in that dream is so underrated, especially with the, within the black community and the family. So I'm, your mom, big ups to her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My mom and my sister, you know, they both put a hundred percent behind me. I love yeah. that. <laughs> but it's difficult breaking into the industry. Um, definitely. Cause there's so much competition, you know, it's a lot of great artists out there. So you always have to do something that make you stand out from other artists. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to deal with, you know, the guys trying to talk to you and things like that. You have to be real strong minded. I feel. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, Queen. Um, <laughs> what is your creative process into writing music? Um, I just feel like God blessed me with this talent. It's like I can't get away from it when I hear a beat. And I just, something comes over me. Everybody say I'm like a whole nother person when I'm writing or when I'm in a studio or when I'm performing. So I think God just gave me that creative um, skill and he installed it in me. And it just comes out when I hear a beat. <laughs> I love that. What yeah. lessons did you learn that you want to share with other female artists coming into the rap game? Um, definitely don't sign, don't sign contracts. You know what I'm saying? Without your lawyer looking over it. You know what I'm saying? When you first start, you don't know everything sounds good. Everything sounds great. You know what I'm saying? You might make a mistake and sign a bad deal and you don't, you don't look through the fine print. They're just like looking at you with this money and this chain and everything like that. So I just feel like don't get suckered into that kind of stuff. Um, that's the don'ts to do when you going in the industry. Don't let nobody sucker you, you know what I'm saying, into something, a bad situation and you right. end up being stuck and can't move around. <laughs> that situation with uh, Meg the Stallion. Yes, yes. Like Megan Thee Stallion is definitely an um, uh, example of don't just jump for things. You know what I'm saying? It may look good. It may look like it's going to be something beneficial. But at the end, sometimes they just want the money. That's it. Right. They don't care about you or what's going to happen. They just want your money. Yeah. Big facts. Um, do you want to share the stage with any other uh, rappers, male or female? I don't want to minimize you because I already know the skills, girl. <laughs> I do actually. I want to share the stage with a lot of artists, um, male and female. Like we were just talking about Megan Thee Stallion. I would love to share a stage with Megan. 
um, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Um, I definitely like to share a stage with like um, NBA Youngboy, you know, Lil Wayne, people like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rod Wave. Yeah. I can see you. Longer the stage don't fall. <laughs> Me and Rod Wave could be on the stage together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, girl. No, how he do that? Girl, I'm like, come on, how y'all do that to my boy? <laughs> Dang, he didn't even try to shake it off. He just fell straight through. He like, fell in there. <laughs> so mighty. So who is a rapper from back in the day that would be your lyrical twin? A lyrical twin? Hmm, back in the day, people would say Tupac. Tupac? <laughs> Why? They call, me, they call me Mini Pac, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so but you're aggressive. Yeah, I'm aggressive. And then a lot of my music have a lot of uh, realness to it. You know, I talk about real life situations and, you know what I'm saying, real life struggles and stuff like that. And also Lil' Kim. A lot of people do say Lil' Kim too. Lil' Kim. So I got to okay, add her to that. That's the queen. So, yeah. <laughs> I can see it. And then speaking of the music, tell me about your latest project. Um, my latest project, I am dropping a mixtape. It's called Beauty and Bars. Mm -hmm. And it's five. That's all I got. It's five, like from the top to the bottom. You know, it, I'm touching on things that you can relate to. I'm rapping on tracks that you already have heard, that you love. And I also have a viral situation um, on my mixtape. I remixed Fujiano's uh, Molly song and it went viral. It was on the shade room and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, yeah. So it's got a lot of bangers on it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Creative. All right. All right. So, <laughs> tell me about your newest single. My new single, um, actually, I got two song singles that's gonna be out there, man. I got um, one single, it's called Call Me. Call Me is basically, it's like a women empowerment type of song. Mm -hmm. It's like, women can be great, they can take care of their kids and make money, they don't need a man for nothing, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just big up the ladies and it make you feel good when you're in a club, you drink and you like, that's what they call me, baby, <laughs> you know? It's just a whole vibe behind it, you know? Right. Yes, yes. Well, what about your other single, the one that you have out now, and I'm looking for it, I've seen it on your um, Instagram page. What is that single? called lately. lately yes and lately is a real situation like um I, you know you always feel like you might have some enemies you know what i'm saying but i didn't have some enemies you know what i'm saying i felt like at that time lately like I'm, i've been having enemies you know what i'm right. saying it's like this one hating you know it's like as you getting higher in the game you know what i'm saying you got people they won't knock you down. You right, feel what right. I'm saying? People hating on you, people won't do you something. So I had some real life stuff that happened to me, you know what I'm saying? And I, I definitely touch on it um, in a song. Like I had a dude put a gun to my head and all of that kind of stuff. So all that's in there, you know? So it's got a lot of realness to that track. Got a lot of realness to that. Oh my God. <laughs> Where they do that at? Uh <laughs> Right? I had to let them know, you know, I know about you looking at the video. I had to let them know that's a mistake right there. Right. I'm coming, right. I'm coming hard too. <laughs> As you should, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. All one right. pack a punch, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite studio session? My favorite studio session? Ooh. I think my favorite studio session is when I was in the studio with Lil Donald. Um, you ever heard of, I know you heard of Lil Donald. Um, he got that song, Better You. He got a lot of a lot of hot songs out there, but it was lit. Like we made this song about 40 inch weave and you know, dancing and in the club. And it was just a whole vibe. Like we turned all the way up in the studio. <laughs> I love it. So you just like, you really like having fun. Yes, 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 yes. I like to live life, you know. Life is too short, you know what I'm saying? So live it to the fullest. That's what I tell people. Live it to the fullest. That's right. At one point in time in my life, you know, I had a depression, you know, after Katrina and things like that. I had developed that, you know what I'm saying? And it was really bad. So uh, I felt like at, at that time it was like the end. and Like it was no more nothing for me, you know what I'm saying? But... Um, after being able to talk to a therapist and everything like that, she helped me pull me out of that. You know what I'm saying? And after that, I said, 
I feel like I got a second chance at life. So I'm going to live it. I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Everything I want to do, everything I put my mind to, I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> oh, my dog is in the camera. You see this dog? <laughs> He's shining too. It's his time to shine. Oh, yeah, he was like, let me get my five minutes of fame, mama. <laughs> So, um, on April 20th, you wrote this post on Instagram, they can't believe I'm single, being a boss ain't easy. So, yes. <laughs> yes. among all the sacrifices, not all, but what are some of the sacrifices you made to get to where you are right now? Um, definitely, I cut out relationships, like even trying, not even dating, mingling. I cut that part out to just 100% be focused on my career. Because, mm -hmm. you know, not just I'm an artist, you know, I have a hair salon, you know, a boutique and things like that. So, you know, it's no time for that. You know right. what I'm saying? Not right now, at least, you know, every woman wants a man or somebody, you know what I'm saying? Companionship, every woman want that, but not right now. Right now, I got to get it. And then later on, when I'm feeling comfortable, and yes, you know what I'm saying? I'll be ready for that. <laughs> How do you find a balance? I saw all of your videos, well, most of them, and you seem super duper busy. So how do you find the balance to run the boutique, run the salon, and then oh, still make music? Oh man, it's hard. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, everybody, a lot of people ask me that same question. I do have help. You know, I got my sister, I got my mom, and we we work hard together. We come together and just think about ways we can structure our business where we can be able to organize, you know, my music and the, the boutique, and we work as a team. So, you know, I got to give it up to my team. If it wasn't for them, I don't know how I would do it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Support. Big support. And they strong women, too, and they, they, you know, married and all of that kind of stuff. But their husbands understand their their work schedule at the shop and in the boutique and with me. You know what I'm saying? So they understand that. So you know, I, I appreciate them. I appreciate them a lot. <laughs> so I watched a video, um, Deja Vu and Lil Dooney from 2008. That was a long time ago uh, when we talk about fac facilitating the dream. In what ways have you grown as an artist since then? Um, I've grown a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like I've, I'm coming into my own lane, my own style, my own flow, you know? Because a lot of times when you start as an artist, when you're starting, you're listening to different other artists. And sometimes you pick up on things from other artists. Right. And then eventually you go into your own style and your own lane, which you, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like now I've grown in that as far as, um, my image and everything. I feel like it was a blessing to be a master cosmetologist and, you know, own a, a beauty salon because it helped me with my own image. You know what I'm saying? It helped me with everything, you know, and different personalities to meet people, hear different stories and, you know, what people go through and things like that. See, I feel like I like that more. I like to rap about real life stuff. You know what I'm saying? I like to get them, you know, hype in the club, turned up, but... <laughs> I want you to feel me at the end of the day. Okay. <laughs> right. You know what I love about you is your energy is super contagious. And the way that you are here, where you are um, with this interview, you like that throughout most of your Instagram videos, except for yeah. when you're making music. <laughs> right. right. Except for that. <laughs> right. So, like, with that, how do you stay grounded? Oh man, I just like, I don't know. I just love life and I, and I, I love to, I love what I do. You know, I just, I love it so much. I'm so passionate about my music and everything I do, I'm passionate about it, but my music is my first love. Mm -hmm. So I think it's my passion that keeps me grounded. You know what I'm saying? Like everything, I just want to make it, everything I do is to better me as an artist to better my career, to go further up. So that's what keeps me grounded right there. Yeah, okay. that yeah. passion, <laughs> that passion girl. <laughs> so, booked and busy, what's the next stop? <laughs> um, The next stop is, I have a, a lot of things going on. I'm gonna be at uh, the bonfire next 
Um, I don't exactly know the date. She called me today. I have so many dates coming up. I, I don't have them all here in my head. That's okay. But if you keep up with me on Instagram, you'll know everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be posting up my flyers and everything like that. And we're going to be doing some um, mixtape release parties for the mi mixtape too. So that'll be up there also. Okay. Now with the elections, uh this past year or this year, who influenced you the most to make you want to just tap into your black girl magic? Um, now what happened to uh, George Floyd, like was, it, it hit me so hard. Like I just instantly started crying. You know, it's like I felt his pain. So um, I actually wrote a song too. I remixed uh, that Breathe by, um, I think that was what? That's Fabulous, that okay. Breathe. So I, I remixed that and because, you know, he couldn't breathe, I touch on that a lot and I use that sample a lot, you know what I'm saying, throughout the song to just like show how, you know, mad I was and mm -hmm. how, how my pain was, my anger was in there. So when you listen to that song, you can definitely feel everything, like everything. So if I play that song with this interview, <laughs> yeah. I'm running to copyright situations, am I? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, I hope not. I hope not. I wrote this, it's my bars. I didn't steal nothing from Fabulous. <laughs> so hopefully we don't have to <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> fight, fight. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what 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 do you want the one thing that nobody knows about you your biggest secret that you'd like to share my biggest secret um dang i have to think about that I'm like, well, I don't share no secret i really don't but you know a lot of people they think i'm so rah rah you know they think i'm just like but I'm really just a, I'm really a laid back person. So maybe I, that's like a secret to people. Like I'm a laid back person. Don't think I'm all like, like I'm just gonna cut your neck off. You know what I'm saying? A lot of have some people think like that. Oh, she just so aggressive, but I'm actually a laid back person in the inside. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of a, if I don't have nothing to do with my music, I'm a bit of a homebody too. It's good to be at home in the middle of COVID, okay? Yes, I'm a homebody. I ain't no type. I ain't that type. Like, if I ain't doing nothing with my business, I ain't going nowhere. You feel what I'm saying? I'm here still working. <laughs> What's one of your most humbling experiences since you've been making music? Um, my most humbling experiences since I've been making music. Hmm, let's see. I would say... Um, I would say when I met Fujiano, he was really, really humble and sweet. So I would say that was my most humbling moment. I, not he wasn't, you know, how they be, some of them. Some of the celebrities be real, like, he was cool. So that was real humble to me. <laughs> that was him. And he allowed me to open up a show for him. And that was cool. And let me perform. I remixed one of his tracks, so you know what I'm saying? To do that, that's real humble. <laughs> so let me perform. Facts. Do you want yeah. to do any um, movie scores? Um, have you say have I been in any movies? Or do you want to do any movie scores with? I do. Movies? I really do. Like I was just telling um some of my friends about Coella Deville. That movie uh -huh. came out. You know, I watched some of those things with my son. You know what I'm saying? Some right. of those Disney Plus movies. Well, uh. I love Coella Deville. Like it, the the way she looked in there, the way she acted, I can just see myself playing a role like that. Like oh, I can wow. just yeah, yes, yes. I'm gonna have to watch that. So is that up there with the Devil Wears Prada? It's just like that. Oh my God! If you like the Devil Wears Prada, you're gonna love Corella Deville. Like you're gonna love it. And a lot of people was like, "Is it Kitty?" Like, no. It, it. I actually felt like I was just watching a movie. You know what right. I'm saying? Towards the end, they put a lot of parts in there that's from the, you know, the childhood um, 
cartoon. Right. But in the beginning, you feel like you're just watching a brand new movie, like you never seen it. So it's it's really dope. It's really dope. I gotta watch that because I'm. You gotta see it, girl. You gotta see it. If you like to wear wear Prada, baby. Yeah. It's all about the fashion in there. Look, I've watched The Devil Wears Prada so many, I can't even tell you the um, number of times I've watched that. That's how many times I've watched it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I, I love that movie. So trust me, when I watched that movie, I was like, oh my God, this movie is so similar. Like, it's just <laughs> like it. <laughs> Which character are you in The Devil Wears Prada? <laughs> I would be, um, I don't know her name. That's the bad thing though. But it's the one, the head, the head. Oh, with the white hair. Yes. I her, the head lady. Yes, <laughs> I would have to be her. Because I was telling them, like my friends, when I was watching Coella, I, I, I actually like the lady uh, Coella was trying to destroy. Mm-hmm. She was real, like, bossy and just, you know, because that's not really like me in person. I'm really cool, I'm laid back. So if I'm going to act out, I would like to act like that real mean running stuff okay that, that e, you know what i'm saying yes, <laughs> like miranda that was her name yeah, miranda yes <laughs> miranda yes. presley yeah that was her <laughs> that was her that would be me in the movie <laughs> <laughs> so and this is my last question uh because i know it's getting late and you got stuff to do and you got to get up in the morning and and man yeah, gotta get to that shop girl you know Listen. what i'm saying <laughs> Catch the bag. You already got it, but you're catching another one. So, exactly. <laughs> where can our viewers follow you and download your music? Oh, yeah. You can follow me on IG. It's Deja Vu 504, D E J A B U 504, baby. <laughs> and um, that's on everything. Like, that's on TikTok, on Twitter, everything. Um, and um, also my YouTube channel. You can um, follow my YouTube channel. It's Deja Vu Live TV. TV. A lot of people think it's Deja Vu 504. Mm-hmm. And if you look that up, you will see some videos, but it's not a lot of videos. I have a TV show, like Deja Vu Live TV. D-E-J-A-V-U Live TV. That's 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 it, all together. Make sure you put it all together, too. But, right. So, okay. So this is my... For real, for real. My last question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The live TV, um, what does that entail? Um, I put a lot of things on my live TV. Um, just me doing me. You might see me just walking from a show. I put a lot of my performances on there. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to just follow me, you know, and who I am on my Deja Vu live TV. And I will be um, doing some, like, vlogging and things like that, vlogging. I will be doing that kind of stuff, vlogging a lot with my 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 girls, my BG4L team. You know, I got to click on the girls. We come the deep. Blues. Yeah, baby, we come deep. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be on there just acting crazy, doing a lot of stuff, you know, entertaining people. <laughs> okay, and when is that going to kick off? Um, That's going to kick off real soon, actually. It was supposed to be like uh, a few Fridays ago, but we had a lot of shows and a lot of things came up, but I think we're gonna kick it off like maybe next Friday or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna tune in. I like your vibe, so. Thank you, girl. I like your vibe too, Thank boo. You. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're I, so pretty, you look like my sister-in-law. You look oh like my Lord. brother-in-law. Thank so pretty, you. yes. Is she old <laughs> like me? Don't do <laughs> oh, whatever. I don't want to hear that old stuff. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> I don't want to hear that old. I don't want to hear your age because you look young to me. So, <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. I don't look like Miranda Presley. Okay, girl. No, <laughs> at, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you so much. But. You do have the Nicki Minaj thing going on, but you just in your own vibe, your dimples, your piercings. I was like, oh, she's so cute and she got prices. Oh, oh, it's one (laughs) braces. No reason. For no reason. Your teeth is so perfect, you don't need braces. No. (laughs) I had like a bit of an overbite. So that's why I got my braces and I love them. Now I'm all in, like, I'm so into the braces. I don't even want them to take them off. Oh no. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> take them off? Oh my God. <laughs> but it fits though. It's 
the ba- like you have this baby face, so it just goes with everything. <laughs> Listen, I be missing appointments just on purpose. So oh, then, Lord. They, don't, they don't, you know, I was like, oh, maybe you have braces for a little while longer. I love them. <laughs> Girl, I might get some fake ones, okay? And just oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I might just do that, okay? But you didn't listen. <laughs> don't ever revert back to this doggone interview if you see me with them. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, she did it. She did. I knew she was gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> I say I do, okay? So <laughs> thank you so much for your time. You were just a, a wonderful addition to my evening. Like, a oh co- my God. So thank you. keep that music popping. I like that you kind of got that gangster boo thing going on. Like, just <laughs> doing your own thing. And then I have seen the growth from when you started. I just wanted to know what you thought yeah. about your vocals and your rhyming skills because you came out hard uh, yes. off the rip. So yes. Yes. where you are now, <laughs> bomb, bomb. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, girl. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. And I enjoyed myself too. Yeah. I feel like we just talking. I didn't feel like we had an interview. Like we just homegirl sitting here talking. Girl talking. <laughs> thank you. For real. For real. <laughs> All right.